Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math Video 42. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 4, click on the link below the video. Hey, this video is about bank reconciliation. Now, here is a business checkbook, and people keep all sorts of different business checkbooks, but we have a balance. No matter whether you do it on paper or Excel or QuickBooks or some other program, we have an ending balance. And then we get our bank statement, or we look it up online, or we print it out up from online. Whoa! It thinks there's $2,935.71 in our account for the, at the end of the month, and we think there's $3,743.96. How could there be such a big difference? Well, it's simple, and this is why reconciling accounts is so important. There are some things like a deposit. We just deposited this in the ATM, right? But the bank hasn't received it yet, so they don't know about it. In addition, there could be a check. We wrote this check to this person <laughs> name A, right? Uh, check number 1261 for 9731. But we mailed it off or gave it to them, and they haven't deposited it and then it hasn't received in our account. So those are two examples, a check we wrote and a deposit we made that the bank doesn't know about. So when you're reconciling checkbook to bank statement, or for that matter, anything, you could reconcile your uh, credit card balance with the credit card statement. But anytime you do that, you just find the things that are listed on your records that are not on their records. Similarly, we see here there's going to be a service charge of $7.60. Well, we haven't put that into our calculation to get our ending balance, or interest, so we earn interest, or uh, return check, right? So you ret the check was returned, also known as not sufficient funds. So there's a couple things on the bank statement that we don't know about that are not um, incorporated into calculator on our total. So in essence, when you're comparing and reconciling our records to someone else's records, the essence is there could be some things on our account that's not listed over here, and there could be some things on the bank statements uh, in the bank statement records that are not in our account. Now, over here on the sheet, uh, services, there are a few terms like not sufficient funds. That's when you bounce a check, right? There's a couple other things you can uh, read through here. Also, why we bank reconcile, reconcile, you can read through there. There's one term, outstanding checks. That means checks that are really awesome and they should get a trophy. No, no, no. Outstanding check just means those are checks that we wrote that the bank hasn't received yet. Not sufficient, or not sufficient funds, that is when someone bounces a check. And now it could be us or someone else. And deposits in transit, that just means, like when we looked over here, we made this deposit, but the bank hasn't received it yet. So it's like in transit. So those are just a few terms here. Now, when reconciling two accounts, I'm going to do it on the computer here. But when I used to do this by hand, when I found something, so for example, here is a e uh electronic bill play for $836.15. And I can find it over here also. So when I used to do this by hand, I would add a color. I'd like color it yellow, color it yellow. Right? I'd go back and forth, back and forth. Ended up all the yellow meant I found it here and here everything that wasn't yellow needed to be considered in the bank reconciliation. Now, I have a little trick here. I'm going to uh, put a little X here like this, and it's going to turn yellow. I'm not going to show you how to do that here. That's kind of a little bit of an advanced trick. At the end of the video, I will show you how to do that, though. All right, I'm going to delete that X. So got it? Now, one other thing before we do this reconciliation in our textbook, they show you this. And now this is not uncommon. This is what oftentimes appears on the back of your bank statement. right? And it gives you really explicit, careful instructions for how to make a, do a bank reconciliation. Now check this out. Let's go look at these two. 
Remember, what is the reason we reconcile? That number and that number are not the same. So what do they do? We take this number and this number. We're going to list the bank statement balance there. We're going to list our checkbook balance here. And we'll reconcile them, meaning we'll put all the things. This is the bank statement balance. We're going to list it right there. And we'll just list the things that are on our statement that they don't know about yet. And we'll get some ending balance. Then we'll take the checkbook balance and list the things that are on the bank statement that we don't know about yet. And we'll get this number. And these two have to be equal, right? Because if they're not, then you need to you know, it could be a, a mistake by the bank or you have a mistake or something. If they're not in balance, then you're in trouble. So the whole point of bank reconciliation is to take our record ending number, their record ending number, and make sure they're actually the same. All right, ready? We're going to start at the top. Now these two ones have already been reconciled from last month. So I start here. We have this electronic bill pay for 75 bucks. I find it here. So I'm going to Whoops. I'm going to click here and do my little tricky thing. Again, I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. But imagine yourself, if you're doing it by hand, or in the old days, we type, you know, highlight that yellow, meaning I've found that one on both statements, right? All right. Now, this deposit. OK, I see the deposit there. No problem. I found it in both. And notice the dates are usually a little bit later than the ones listed over here because right it takes a while all right now what about this one an, an e payment for 836.15 e payment 30 okay so there i found it here and here so far so good right if they were all exactly the same then the balances would be exactly the same all right uh, check 1258 for 400 1258 for 400 All right, uh, okay, 12.59. Oh, I don't see 12.59. Okay, so I'm not going to do that one. Uh, 12.60 for 60.01. for 60.01. Okay, so I see that. And you get the idea, just going back and forth. So that's, I didn't find that. I didn't find this one either. RC means return check. How about check 12.61? I don't see that. No, I don't see that one. Deposit. All right, so I don't see the deposit over here either. Uh, ATM 40. Oh, and there's an ATM 40 over here. Let's take my highlighter. Bloop, take my highlighter. All right, so I've looked through here. The white things mean those are things that we know about that the bank statement does not, or the bank doesn't know about. <clears throat> now let's look over here. Now. This is kind of a silly problem from the uh, textbook. And I set it up this way because you're going to have to do your homework from there. Uh, let's go look in what RC, IC, SC, and CP mean. I don't have the legend here. But if you come over to the sheet 5.3, here's one of your homework problems. And there's a legend up here that tells you what it is. It's also in the textbook and in the homework. Now, the silliest one is return check RC. Let's go over and look here. Usually you see not sufficient funds or something like that. But over here, they just list RC. They don't even tell you what check it is. That's not how a bank statement works. They tell you what check, and they probably have more information than that. But nevertheless, that's what they do it here. That's the way they do it in this textbook. All right, so I look over here. That's not there. Now, if it was a real um, return check, that means you had already added it in your accounting record somewhere. So you'd have to go and make a, some sort of entry to take into account that you added it. For our bank reconciliation, that means this is a subtraction. It's under the withdrawal uh, category because the check was sent in, the bank added it in, and now it bounced. So now they're subtracting it out again. Interest, credit, that means you got some interest, service charge. And check, check per check charge. So you got $12 charge for checks. Now, those things, if it was this was an accounting class, you'd actually have to take all of these things and put them into your accounting records. Not only that, but if you were doing your checkbook register, you'd add them there too. But 
this section of the book, all they do is show you how to reconcile. And so that's what we're going to do right now over here. Now, before we do this, I want to make it easier on ourselves. We e we're going to start, well, actually, let's do this. Here's enter new bank balance from bank statement. So I'm going to type an equal sign and then scroll over. Now, we're going to have to do a lot of scrolling because uh, I want to keep it that big. But that's all that's doing. And then down here, oh, this is the ending balance for our checking account. So I'm going to say equals and scroll over here. All right. Now, there's two things. We, we may have some stuff um, that we need to add to the banks and some stuff we need to subtract. And from our side, there's going to be some stuff that we need to subtract from our number and some stuff we need to add. So let's go look and see if we can figure out which of the items, this is our records, which of the items that the bank doesn't know about do we need to add and which do we need to subtract. All right, so I'm actually going to put a label here. I'm going to say um, items. I just put um, items that bank does not know about, and then that we need to add. In essence, we're going to, and I should have, let me move this over here. We're going to have to add. They don't know about it, and we have to add it to their balance to, to get the correct balance. So um, when we write a check, is that something we have, they have to add? No, no, that's something they don't know about that we have to subtract. But there's a deposit, all right? So the only one thing we have is this. All right, now items, and I'm going to type items and let that pop up. Item that the bank does not know about that we need to subtract. And there should be two of them here. We have this check and this check. So I'm going to add them equals this plus this. Those are two items when we add them together that the bank doesn't know about. We've already subtracted these checks from our records, but they don't show up here. So that means the bank didn't subtract them. All right, now let's do the same type of thing over here. Watch this. I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to say, oh, I'm just going to type something over here. Items we don't know about. And I'm just going to say add. So we need to find the things here that we don't know about on our statement that we're going to have to add. OK, so uh, right here, and I'll make this a little bit wider. All right, um, return, no, that in the return check we're going to have to subtract. Uh, inter, oh, that we have to add, because that's an addition to our account that we don't know about. Service charge, those are both charges. So there's only one thing. And then I'm going to do that same trick. I, it does autocomplete from above, and I'm just going to say subtract. All right. OK, so that's a subtraction equals this. And I'm going to add up all the things we have to subtract. A service charge and a uh, check charge. All right. So that kind of helps you know, go through on both sides and figure out the things that need to add and subtract. Again, these are the things we don't know about. We have to add to our side the interest and add the subtractions, and similarly for this side. So let's go over here. And the nice thing about this is, and uh, it, it looks very similar to a lot of reconciliation forms in the back of bank statements. All right, so enter new balance from bank statement. We did that. List any deposits made by you, not yet recorded by the bank. And I see you could list them all, but I'm just going to do the one, right? So I'm going to click that. Oh, yeah, this is the stuff we need to add that the bank doesn't know about. That's a deposit. Enter. OK, so you could list them individually or just add them up like that. Now we total. Oh, well, that's easy. Alt equals. And I'm going to highlight all those, just in case later I use this template, right? OK. Now total of checks outstanding. Those are the checks that got all the trophies. No, no, no. Those are the checks that we wrote that the bank doesn't know about. So we already did that. And it is a subtraction right there. Right, so that, that number right there was the addition of that and that. And now, finally, we go equals this minus that. So 
if the bank knew everything that we did, that would be the balance, right? So now we're going to do a similar thing to our side, and these two numbers better be equal, right? Is that was that our balance? Sure enough. Write the total of any fees or charges, deductions by the bank. So that's all the subtractions, right? They even have a little minus sign right there. So I've already done that. These are the things that the bank subtracted that we didn't know about. There it is. I'm just going to hit Enter. Finally, there's some things that the bank added, like interest. Uh, add interest. Uh, it's not just interest. There's other things, like you could have automatic uh, bill payments come in, or like I mentioned, if you had a, a merchant in another country, they almost certainly would wire the money to you, right? So there could be other additions besides interest. All we have is the interest. Uh, now, actually, I forgot a step here. Those are the two. We could do a single formula here, but they do it in multi-steps. This minus that. And finally, we get to add equals uh, Alt equals, it guesses wrong, so I'm going to redirect it and enter. And are they the same? I don't trust it. I'm going to say equals this equals that. Because maybe I did something wrong with uh, rounding, or maybe I uh, have the formatting, it just looks like they're equal, but a formula will always tell us. Beautiful. So there we have reconciled the bank statement and our account. So. We use this form here, and that's some of your homework looks like that. But in essence, reconciling is very important because there's always some things that may be on our records that the bank doesn't know about. There may be some things on the bank statement that we don't know about. Reconciling, we just make sure that everyone's in agreement. Now, I promised you that I'd show you how to do this cool little trick with the X's and the uh, automatic highlighting. So I'm going to come over to the sheet CF and DL. It has everything completed except for a few X's. Now, here's how we do it. This column, we want to add something called data validation list. So there's a little drop down so we can select the X. And then we'll add conditional formatting based on whether or not we put an X in this column. All right, so to do data validation, I highlight this whole column. I'm going to go up to data, data validation, and then data validation. The keyboard shortcut is Alt-D-L. DL. I say what? Data validation just means, is there valid data in the cell? So any value, that's the default, right? But I'm just going to say, hey, allow a list. And the only thing that I'm going to put in the source is x. That actually means you can't type anything except for x in there. And it says, in cell dropdown. So that's how I did that. So now I can come over here and select an X. And I just delete if I want to get rid of it. Notice we don't have the yellow yet. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Alt-DL, Tab. And instead of anything, I'm going to put List. I want the List, Tab, and an X. That means from now on, there will be a drop down, and X is the only thing. By the way, if you wanted to uh, have a column of like somebody's name, Notice that means you can collapse this. You could click in here, highlight the column, and then there would be a whole drop down list of people's names. And those would be the only things allowed in the cell. Click OK. All right, so now we can see it works. I'm going to delete that. Now, here's the trick for the highlighting. And the way we do this is we highlight the entire table. Because notice, if I put an X here, everything in this row needs to get the color yellow. And the trick is you highlight the entire table. And notice that the active cell, the light color cell, is up in the upper left-hand corner. Now, actually, we saw this trick back in um, percentage change video for stocks. And it's not required for this class, but it is a great trick. So highlight, active cell right there. You go up to the Home ribbon, Conditional Formatting, and uh, New Rule. The keyboard shortcut is Alt. O D. Then you say use a formula, and here's the formula. Now notice everything in this row is dependent on what's in the, the that cell right there. So as soon as we put an X there, we want this cell to turn yellow, this cell to turn yellow, this cell to turn yellow, etc. So the way you do that is you build a true/false formula so that all of the cells 
get true when I put an x here, which means I'll get the yellow, or false means there's no x, no yellow. But watch this. Here's the formula. You click in that cell, and you by default, it's locked in all directions. So you have to hit the F4 key once and twice. That puts the dollar sign in front of the column, but not the row. And then you type an equal sign, and then in quotes, x. And then format. Even in this, in this class, we don't get to really learn about this is called a mixed cell reference. But uh, that works. Uh, in other classes, I teach you the, kind of the fundamentals of cell references. But format, and then any format you want, whether it's border, font, number, you can go wild. I'm just going to add yellow. Click OK. I don't know if those are all yellow, right? But now, well, let's do the same thing over here first. Alt O D. New rule, use formula. The active cell is in the upper corner. I want that one, so I click in here and click. I hit the F4 key twice. That puts a dollar sign in front of the letter, but not the number. And then I type equals in quotes X, end quote, format, and then some color. Click OK, click OK, click OK. All right, so now when you reconcile, you found the check, so I'll go highlight. So that check number, check number 60, so I highlight right here. Boom. So that was the ATM. So there you go. All right, uh, that was above and beyond what we're required to do for this class. Main thing is you do want to know how to, to reconcile uh, bank accounts. And the next chapter, I think, is payroll. See you next chapter, chapter 6, I think. All right, see you next chapter.